everybody, I'm Suzanne, and in this painting tutorial, we're it's mainly going to be about color and light and texture. And you know me, and you, if you've been watching my videos, you know how much I love doing detail, tiny brushwork. Well, today's video is mainly about how to create texture and just play with the light and the and the different colors. And one of the, you know, some of the products that we're gonna use in today's video, and I'm gonna leave a link to the products in the description. I'm using cold wax medium and a little liquid and Gamsol. And I'm mixing some of that in with my paint to give this incredible texture that I want in the sheep's wool. So here is the actual finished piece. And you can see that there's a lot of fun color. And, and if you really look closely, you're gonna see a lot of texture, especially in the wool. And that's what I was after. And it was fun. It's nice to experiment with different mediums. And that's what today's video is all about. So sit back, enjoy, or paint along if you would. And we'll go ahead and jump into this painting. I start off with a very light wash of Yellow Lake and Gamsol on the canvas. And then I just take a, just a nice clean brush and kind of suggest where the sheep are going and wipe them out just to give me an idea of the composition. Now for this little sheep in the meadow painting, um, here's our starting palette. And of course, you know, I will add more and I'll let you know what colors I do add. But I've got my titanium white. This is actually Rose Matter. I have Italian, what is that color? That is Italian brown ochre. This is a Michael Harding color. This is Burnt Sienna, also Michael Harding. This happens to be Windsor Newton, Windsor Newton. I have raw umber, Windsor Newton. I have Payne's Gray, um, King's Blue, and um, Deep, Deep Violet. And that's what we're gonna start with. Now, at first, I'll just be using some pretty big brushes and establishing my um, composition. I often will take several images and kind of do the composition on the fly. So let's jump into this painting and see what happens. Once I uh, am establishing again the um, actual composition, I'm just, just you know, kind of suggesting where things are going, wiping certain areas out, making marks where trees are going, that sort of thing. And uh, so I'm already feeling good about it. I love the yellow because this is a sunrise and I want the colors to resemble that beautiful light and color that a sunrise might offer. So I'm taking the uh, rose matter, mixing it with titanium white, a little bit of um, of the Payne's gray to mix an interesting sky color. And what's nice is, and you'll see as I do the application, and I just, I'm, it, it mixes beautifully with the yellow lake that's already on the canvas. Remember, everything's still very wet. This is very alla prima at first. Um, but this is done over several days. So, you know, but just for today's purposes, the, the, uh, the background yellow is still very wet. So there is a lot of interesting blending. I'm using a number 12 um, ivory filbert um, to do the application. I just need a big brush. And you can see the yellow light coming through the uh, pink that I'm adding to the uh, canvas. And I love that. I love, love, love that. So... And now I'll lighten up the, um, um, the upper part of the sky and then move a little bit of cool down around the animals' heads where the horizon, you'll see, I'll be cutting in and creating where the trees are going as well. So this is so much fun. I love the beginning start of a painting.
The background trees are added uh, using a little bit of uh, Payne's Gray into the original mixture that I started with, and I'm actually adding a little of the Italian brown um, ochre to it. It just kind of warms it up, and I, I'm giving the trees that, um, you know, just a very soft feel, and you can keep that softness by making sure that you don't have so much uh, difference in your value of the background color and the um, uh, the tree. So there's a very little change in the value and we're still using very, very much the same color family. So after I get that in, I've got to start working on more of the background because I generally work from the background to the foreground. I'm going to add a little bit of blue and I'm, um, it's, it's titanium white and king's blue to the right at that horizon line where the trees start. It kind of makes everything else pop a little bit. And uh, again, I'm using a very soft, I uh, believe it's a 279 series um, brush that's an old filbert. It's pretty frayed, but it's, it's still a good tool. And once I've got that in, uh, I'll start looking. I'm adding more titanium white to my palette. And uh, I'm actually adding a little bit of um, the King's, I'm sorry, I'm adding the Yellow Lake and Mononzo um, Orange. And don't forget the sides of the canvas in this case. And I'm just kind of popping in the uh, background here of the actual pasture. Now I'm going to add a little bit of Michael Harding's Italian Green Umber, which is a very transparent color, but it's a perfect, perfect color for just putting in some of the dark values and start in the sheep and creating their actual form. And I like to put down my dark colors first, but I'm using, you know, the transparency of this particular paint uh, allows for me to kind of make corrections as I go. It's, it's not, it's very forgiving. So I'm laying in just the idea of where the sheep are going and it, their dark values.
And I've added a lot more color to the sheep. They're getting more and more form. Um, there is, where the light is hitting the sheep on the left side, it's a bright, bright, bright color. And I've not really put that in, but I've left out where I will put that paint. Um, so I will be using a lot more of the yellow lake on that side of the sheep. Um, and I'm also making my grays using King's Blue and a little bit of the, um, um, just a little, meh. am I using a little raw umber? Cause I don't want it to be very intense yet. And uh, yeah, so I'm just building up the sheep a little bit. Of course I had to put a little bit of cadmium inside those ears. <laughs> Cause you know, I had to, I had to. Then. All right, I feel pretty confident that they're going to be fine. I'll, I'll, get, I'll work these sheep. But I'm going to have a few sheep out here and then kind of lead the eye towards these sheep. So I have to kind of suggest where I think some of those other sheep are going. Now to put in some of the supporting cast <laughs> of this painting. So I've got some other sheep in the background that need to go in. And so I'm trying to, you know, I'm, I'm moving around and I'm looking and I know there's going to be sheep that I need to ha they're they're there as part of the composition to lead the eye to the front sheep so I've got to figure out where to lay them in so I kind of start here <laughs> and I am going to just just put in assorted sheep here and there and they won't there's not going to be detail there's basically just going to look like little lumps out in this field trust me you'll see how this goes in and you know I'm going to have to use my special little wipeout tool that I like so well to create the highlights on the backs of these sheep so you'll see how this happens but this is fun this is a very early stage of a painting and it's always a lot of fun and one of the things I have to keep in mind is the actual size so as sheep are getting closer to you they're going to get bigger and if they're farther away they're going to be smaller so you'll see how I'll adjust one of the sheep this one right there that has to be it has to be bigger it's um because it's in front so I'll keep adjusting the size until I get it right
I'm working to work on some of the sticks and trees and stuff in the back. So to create the depth, I'm gonna lighten up the value of this uh, tree back here. And, you know, just lightening up the value immediately puts that into the background too. Remember, I am working in wet paint, so this is really nice, and it does add that softness that I need. I am using a Shiraz rigger to do the detail of the, you know, the sticks and branches of the trees, but always being very conscious of making sure my values are not that intense, like, especially if it's supposed to be a tree that's in the background. I'm primarily using uh, its deep violet and a little umber and some of the... Um, uh, rose matter to create these trees and uh, yeah this is fun Remember, this is the light of an early sunrise. So the light is falling upon some of the, the bushes and things that are in the front. And I'm just putting in little bits of light, um, just a lighter value. And it, it's, it's, it's loosening it up a little bit. And then 
you know, putting in, playing, playing the sides of either dark or light values where they're needed. And so of course, at the base of any bush line there, it is a little darker. And I am using the uh, Italian green umber quite a bit just to create that look here, that darker value here. You can see it's got a little bit of green to it. And when needed, I add a little bit of raw umber to it as well. I've got to bring a little bit more solid form to the sheep in the background. So I'm just intensifying the value. They're still very transparent and still very soft. And I'm going to use a smaller brush here. I'm going to use this little, um, the uh, little pointed round that's a uh, red dot brush. You'll see I'll be putting the highlights in the back and just establishing everything here. I, I need them to show out. So here you can see I'm using a very small brush and, and putting the just the highlights on top of the sheep. And I'm using just actually straight titanium white, hoping a little bit of the yellow background will mix into that paint, but it, it actually doesn't. <laughs> so I end up kind of warming it up just a tiny bit. And um, so I have to establish this sheep here and I keep making sure that this sheep that I'm currently working on is big enough um, 
you know, as far as the proportionality of the animals there. Now, I am mixing a little cold wax, and we're going to get into that here in just a second. Uh, the cold wax does um, offer a lot more um, texture, lets me go a lot more impasto with my paint. And, um, but it offers a translucency that's really interesting. So that yellow underpainting will always shine through. And uh, so yeah, this is fun. So I'm I love using knives too. Uh, now I'm gonna show you some of the products that we're using here. And I am using mainly the uh, Gamblin's Cold Wax and the Liquin, um, which is actually a Winsor Newton. Now you can use um, another type of medium like the Galkid or something. Um, I use a little bit of Gamsol just to thin it out. I, I like it to be a little bit thinner. Um, you can use an 80, 20, you know, 80 to 20 on your paint to uh, cold wax if you prefer. But this is what we're using. So, so you can see me mixing it here. I am um, just, you know, dipping here into the cold wax slurry that I created using, using the liquid and Gamsol into the cold wax. And this is what I'm going to be using to do the application.
you can really appreciate the peaks that the cold wax adds to uh, the oil paint. And I'm just uh, doing some of the detail in this, this one sheet. This is probably the only background sheet that's going to have some detail because she is a little closer to our, our main ladies in the, uh, in the painting. But um, so I, I don't always just jump in using the cold wax. I kind of use it towards, you know, when I, where I need the detail. So I'm pushing out, you can see I'm moving that wax a little bit, pushing it out because I, I need to make this girl a little bit bigger. So yeah, so I'll, I'll play back and forth. And you do have quite a bit of uh, work time with this, um, with cold wax uh, when you're using it. Um, it is, it's, it's, this is a fun little experiment for me. I really am enjoying making this much texture in a piece because <laughs> it's, it's, it's unusual for me, but I am really enjoying it. As I start to add a little bit more detail in um, the foreground sheep, I'm using a number one Eclipse Long Filbert and just starting to add the detail. So you can see how thick I went in on the sides there, on the left side of this U, as I am putting in the very, very, very bright yellow um, where the sun is hitting her on that side. and. I won't put in on the dark values that I'm putting in to create that deepness in the wool. You need that. I'm not using the, um, the cold wax. I want that to recess. I don't want the shadows of the wool to come forward. I only want the highlights or the, the actual wool itself to come forward, not the shadows that the, that the wool creates. So I won't be putting the cold wax in those dark values. So to create that believable wool, you have to put just your, your dark paint down first, and then you use your lighter um, paint that has the cold wax medium in it to create that wool. So I'm working, you know, you can see on this outside part of the sheep on the left side, I put a very thick, bright, bright, um, and a, the paint that I'm using to create that bright yellow is Yellow Lake. It's the same color I started with when I did the wash. And here you see me putting in the dark values, but I am not using the wax when I do the dark values here. And you'll, it, it'll, it makes sense really when you watch me um, put the uh, cold wax on top, then you really create that form and that texture and the depth in the wool.
you can really appreciate um, the texture here. When you see this, this has the cold wax in it, you can see how it basically stands right up. That wool is just popping. It's popping right on this, this sheep's back. And so it's playing with texture to create the depth. And this is fun. <laughs> I'm laughing them all. <laughs> I know I keep saying that, and you're probably sick of hearing it, but it, it truly is fun. And if you have never tried cold wax to create texture, you really need to. This is a lot of fun. So as I move down her back, and I'm, you see how I can really lift up this paint. I, it, you do have to be very, you know, if you be very deliberate with your stroke and pop that down and then leave it alone because you don't want to overwork it. You don't want to um, flatten out your wax and um, yeah so and I'll go in between some of my layers and add some dark value without wax just so that wool can pop a little bit more and I go back and forth between the dark value without wax and the light value with wax
Again, I'm just showing you the products that I'm using to create the slurry of the cold wax that I'm using. So again, liquid cold wax Gamsol is what I'm using today. And again, I will leave this in the description for you. I'll leave a link to these products for you in the description. So if you want to give it a try, if you haven't already, there you go ahead. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Now, I'm going to show you how I actually mixed mine. Now, I took the cold wax and made the slurry first, okay? So, when I'm adding it to my paint, I on the right you see the slurry of the cold wax, Gamsol, and uh, liquid combination. And I'm adding a little bit more here just to show you. This is my cold wax here. So, when I'm adding it to my paint, I'm just adding little bits. It's it's not like I have a ton. And you'll see I'll just scoop some of it up and then move it off to the side for the paint that I'm going to mix. And um, so you don't necessarily need a ton of it in there to create that interesting texture. So here I am mixing the paint here. So I mixed some stuff. <laughs> so what I did was I took, uh, you know, some of the uh, the cold wax medium and I mixed it first with a little bit of, um, just a little bit of uh, liquid and a little bit of Gamsol. And I, I made a, just kind of a, you know, I don't wanna call it, I call it a thick slurry. And then I mixed pigment in. And so I made a light, cool version of um, a highlight color that's going on the sheep. And I have a, a slightly greener, but almost the same value. This is a little bluer, this is a little greener. And then um, with this color, I actually mixed, I had a lot of the Italian umber, but it just wasn't opaque because it's, it's a transparent color. So I mixed uh, Terra Vert and um, raw umber together and then a little bit of white and more of the, um, the uh, cold wax medium to make this color here. So this, you know, this is going to give a little bit of, uh, a little bit more texture, um, and just a, a, a matte, more of a matte finish on the piece. Um, but this, this is fun. This is kind of experimental and we're just gonna go ahead and see where it goes. Going in with the lighter version. With that thick texture of wool, these girls are looking quite substantial. Uh, they really do have a, just, you can really see the depth and the weight that this, this uh, wax is creating to make that wool seem so thick. And, uh, oh, you know I'm going to be using this again. This has been a really fun little experiment. I love how wooly and thick these girls look.
Now to work on the, um, the actual foreground grass. I wanna get that same type of texture in there, but I've gotta put this, uh, I need to deepen this color up a little bit. So I'm just putting, and this has got wax in it. And another thing that's really cool about cold wax is that it allows you to carve almost, almost like, you know, it's almost like a sculpture. You can carve into it and create even more texture, not necessarily by adding more paint. So I'm actually putting down a little bit of Michael Harding's um, bur uh, raw sienna in here into the cold wax and uh, just creating a little, you know, just that thick, rough grass that is in the foreground here and I really want to I want to throw it down I want to add a lot of a lot of thick grass that's why now you can figure out why my sheep didn't have full length legs because I knew they were going to be in the in all this uh, tall grass so I'm using a sword brush actually it's a dagger it's a, a Shiraz dagger quarter inch and I am creating this grass so I'm I'm kind of going between using the um the Italian brown ochre, a little bit of burnt sienna, a little bit of raw umber. I'm kind of mixing it up and I've got it all going into that slurry of uh, um, cold wax. And since the cold wax that I'm working with that I initially put down is very thick and wet, it gives me that work time that I need to, to create that grass. Of course, at the base of the grass, it's going to be darker, and I keep adding more raw umber just to, you know, go back and forth. And then some of the grass is catching light, so it's going to be a lot lighter. So I'm adding more of the yellow lake and titanium white going back and forth, but just creating this fun, thick grass that these uh, ewes are standing in. All right. So sometimes I'm looking at the basic overall composition here, and I think I need some more sheep kind of up in this area, smaller, just lumps. Basically, <laughs> I need some heavy lumps to kind of balance. I've got the trees, but I'm, I, I think I still need some more. So I'm going to add um, a few more sheep in the background. I'm really happy or I'm pleased with the overall composition. I love the color. I love the texture, but I really think I need to add a little bit more weight in this general area. So, I am going to add a couple little lumpy sheep. Uh, so I really wanna repeat basically the colors that I have here, and they're not anything spectacular, but they still have to be repeated, so. And I remembered using quite a bit of, um, oops, it's still very wet, so I should not touch it. Let's see, so I'm gonna add a little bit more umber. I'm mixing a color, I'm mixing a little bit of uh, um, the Italian green umber and
Well, after I establish where my sheep are, and I'm pretty comfortable now, I like, I like this a lot better to have more sheep. I've got to ground them. So I'm creating the shadow that the sheep would create uh, with the sun coming down on top of them, with that early morning sun. Just so there's the cool shadow on that hot, hot grass. And it just, it just pulls it together. It just leads that eye right to those main sheep. And that was what I was going for. I wanted to create that composition. So it helps. It helps. That just even just that little bit of green made all the difference in the world. Now I've got to add some more grass. I'm back on there with that sword brush and going back and forth between all the different uh, colors that I have. And I'm showing you that I'm adding more of the uh, yellow lake, adding more just more texture, a little bit more uh, umber here, there. And before you know it, I'll have a, a whole foreground full of deep, deep grass. And you can also use your palette knife. The palette knife is another wonderful way to create that texture. And uh, you'll see, I'll be using that too. I just, I'm just having a ball. This is all about texture and color for me, folks. And it has been a really fun experiment and I feel like it's been successful. So guys, if you have any questions, again, do not hesitate to ask me. Just leave it in the comment section. I'll get to you. And if you're not my subscribers, hey, go ahead and subscribe. Go ahead and smash that button and you'll know uh, when the next video comes out. You can ring that bell and uh, yeah you'll get to see the next video that comes out. And here is the completed piece. Now here is, this is a natural light. So this is what the painting looks like when it doesn't have a bright overhead light shining on it. And I was really, really pleased. You can really appreciate the texture and it's, it's really sitting right up there. Um, I did go ahead and give it a little bit of, of a, um, a glazing once it was dry, just to create a little bit more depth in the fur by using the, um, Italian green umber, but uh, yeah, that that's it. I had so much fun. You can even see the texture in the grass. It's um, between using the sword brush or the dagger brush and using a palette knife. I f I'm very happy uh, with how this piece came out, and I hope you do too. And if you did enjoy today's video, please give me a thumbs up. See, isn't texture fun? I had so much fun with this piece and here we go. And uh, I'll bring you in a little bit closer so you can see some of the, the detail. Um, keeping it, it's, it's a great way to kind of create that impasto look. And when you really want that, that wool to really show and show the texture, you know, having the dark pigment underneath and then putting the lighter pigment on top just raises and creates the depth that you want to, to have in the, in the wool. And the colors were fun. I loved using these different colors, for me anyway. Um, it just created a beautiful, I don't know, it just made, made me feel good. <laughs> it made me feel good inside. And really, that's what art should do. The whole process should be fun and uh, the colors should brighten your spirit, right? So again, thank you so much for joining me today. If you have any questions at all that I, you know, about any of the products I used. Again, I will leave it in the 
down below in the uh, comment section and in the description. Just leave your comments in the comment section and know that these links for these products will be in the description. Um, yeah, if you have any uh, suggestions on something you'd like to see, let me know that too. I, I'd be interested and know that I do have an awesome workshop coming up and it's May 27th, 20, uh, 28th and 29th this year. And it's in my hometown of Kingsport, Tennessee, and I hope you can join me. And I'll leave that information also in the description below. So again, thank you so much for joining me today, and I will see you next time. Bye.